Hey, welcome to what is going to be my best attempt at explaining how to use the Blender to Unreal add-on for Blender. It's not a plugin for Unreal, it's only Blender, so you don't have to worry about installing plugins into Unreal Engine. Um, there are markers along the bottom of the screen here if you want to skip the installation portion of the tutorial, but it is a pain in the butt, so I'm going to walk you through it for those of you that uh, aren't aware of how to get it installed. Also, the previous tutorial went over in pretty good detail, the best possible way that I could find to get uh, scale, collisions, materials, and light maps into Unreal properly. If you're unfamiliar with those, I advise you skip back for a refresher. There's a card up in the top right here for you, but uh, if, you, if you know everything there, don't worry about it, we're going to get started. Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you guys, this part sucks. So just go to this link, it's in the description down below if you don't want to type it in. And you'll find yourself at the connections section of the Epic Games website. Switch over to the accounts tab and you're going to want to connect your GitHub account. After you click that, it's going to make you go through all these hoops. Uh, just accept everything. It's just terms of service. Go ahead and hit sign in here and then enter the code they're going to email you. And then after you've verified that, just hit authorize and it's going to accept your verification, and then you've got to go over to GitHub. So first, when you're at GitHub, you've got to go to the Epic Games main page, and it'll have an invitation that you have to accept, because that's what the thing you just did on the Unreal Engine website does. So just go ahead and hit Join Epic Games. So now finally, you can go to this link up here, the Blender Tools, and you will find yourself in the Blender Tools repo. Now, you've just got to make sure this page updates all the time, so make sure you're getting the Send to Unreal plugin, because the Rigify plugin is also in here, which we're not dealing with. Just grab the zip file, download it, and then we will put it into Blender. All right, so now you're in Blender. Installing add-ons is super easy in here. Just go to Edit, Preferences, Install, and find the add-on that you downloaded. I'm going to use the 1.4.9 version. For some reason, the new versions don't work for me. Only 1.4.9 works. So if, if you're having issues, uh, just go ahead and install that one. Uh, and go ahead and check this off and we're good to go. You've got it installed. Okay, so there is one final thing we have to do in Unreal Engine before this works properly. So go ahead into your editor, come up here to settings and go to plugins. You don't have to install anything new, it's just in Unreal Engine by default. So just come in here to the built-in section and search for Python, and you've got your Python editor script plugin. Just make sure that's checked. And then go over here to project settings, and there is a setting in here that I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to search for it. It's called Remote Execution. And you just want to check this box off, and that allows Blender to find the instance of Unreal that you've got open. And that is it. Now it should work. Now, by default, the Blender add-on will have an unspecified weird folder path. Uh, I'll show you here. So if you just go up to Edit and Preferences, uh, it's already here for me, but you can just find it by searching in the add-ons menu. Uh, it's got game slash untitled category slash untitled asset. This will work. If you import just with this, it'll just make a new folder and pop it in. But uh, you probably shouldn't do that just because you want to sort things out. So say, for example, I've got this tutorials folder, I've got the static mesh add-on tutorial, and I want to use this as the location it imports. So I'm just going to go to show and explore, and it's going to pop up here, and you want to copy up to where it says content. And another thing about this is Blender uses forward slashes, but Windows uses backslashes just because, uh, well, I'll blame Bill Gates. Uh, so you just want to change these to forward slashes. And then you're going to want to put a slash at the end as well. And uh, that's it. You can do it for the animation folder as well, but we're not dealing with animation, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, so the last thing you need to do is change Unreal's import settings. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no way to do this other than actually, like, importing a mesh. So just find any old FBX or OBJ or whatever um, and import it. And then just make sure all these settings are similar to mine. Uh, I think I'm using basically the default settings here. The most important ones are uh, normal import method, the uniform scale, uh, the material one, you're going to want the search location to be all assets, material import method to be do not create material and import check textures to be unchecked. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that's important in here. Maybe auto generate collision, that's up to you. And uh, if you change these things, 
it'll remember. You can just hit cancel. You don't have to actually import that mesh. That's just the way that I know how to bring up that menu. I don't know how to bring it up any other way. And then you can just go back to Blender and we can get started on making these meshes actually worthwhile, worth uh, importing. Okay, so in Blender, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, we're just gonna really set, really quickly set up a mesh that we can import. So let's just get a cube. We'll make sure it's something unique looking that uh, we can import and be proud of here. And then, uh, and then we're good to go. And then we're gonna go ahead and make collisions afterwards. So make sure that your mesh is in the mesh category here. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna drag this into the collisions and make sure it's called UCX underscore whatever the name was of your object. And uh, I'm just gonna convex hull here. Uh, if you aren't aware of this, there's another video that'll link up in the top right. It's gonna tell you how to do all of this. Um, convex collisions in particular. If you're not aware how to do anything else, just watch the other video that I linked at the beginning. Should be up in the card too. For materials, make sure that the material you're using is the exact same name in Unreal Engine as it is in Blender. So if you go up to your cube here, you can uh, you can hide the cube. It, the add-on's just gonna automatically grab whatever's in your collision collection. Uh, so grab your regular cube and put the name in here and change the color just so it looks like something. And then that's materials done. And then just make sure your, uh, your scale settings look normal they, they should be in here it, as long as it's set to default you're fine okay so that's done um you do not need to select the ucx cube it should just export automatically auto magically yeah you see it auto selected it and then it's going to be in here and you're done that's it that's the whole thing if you're noticing weird light maps when you build, just make sure that uh, your static mesh is unwrapped. I covered this in the previous video as well. You can make a second light map and just auto unwrap it and then uh, Unreal Engine will grab the light map and make it for you, but uh, it's fine. Yeah, you'll see here, it'll even grab it if the UCX cube is hidden or if you have the uh, forward slash key clicked. It's really cool. So you can see here, we've got our cube and everything's good to go. Now this even works if you have multiple materials. So let's say I've got this, uh, this nice blue material over here that I believe is actually just called nice grid. Yeah, let's grab this one actually. And we can go in here and make a second material, assign it the same name and you can go ahead and assign that to the second one here. And if you just export it again, it's gonna overwrite the old one. And it just automatically does it. It's so cool, it's so fast. I didn't cut out anything there. It did it automatically, like instantly. It's so nice. Really the only painful thing about this add-on is installing it. It's, I don't know why they make it such a pain in the butt to go through the Unreal Engine GitHub. Like, I, I don't know, man, I don't have anything to say about it. Um, but this workflow makes it really easy to iterate on static meshes. Uh, you can change your mesh, then export it again. You can see it kind of does it like right away. It's amazing. And keep in mind that the plugin exports everything that's visible. So if I had this, and I also had a circle, and I also had an icosphere, it's gonna export everything that's visible. I'll show you in the mesh folder. Yeah, yeah, here. So you'll see, we've got this icosphere here. It exported as a separate object because we don't have merge meshes enabled here. If you have combined meshes checked off, that's going to merge them into one object, but I don't wanna do that because it's horrible. So just something to keep in mind. Bless you. Cool, so that's that's literally it. This is super easy. Like this this add-on's so easy to use once it's in and it's so quick. The bad thing about it is it, it doesn't really understand animations. Skeletal meshes it kind of works with fine, uh, but animations are a bit wonky still. So if I'm gonna make a video about skeletal meshes and animations for this, I'm gonna wait until they update it a bit and it's less broken. Um, but the next video in this series is going to be about exporting skeletal meshes and skeletal meshes animations and just doing it the manual way without the add-on because the add-on is broken.
But, uh, but yeah, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you for doing some learning. Everybody loves learning. And I uh, hope to see you again in the next video. Have a good one. Later days. Still around, huh? Still hanging out? Remember, even if you're growing the tiniest bit, growth is relative. And there's always room for more growth. And growth is always good. You're doing great.